What is InchoTech? Is it a nightmare, as many say? Or is it a cute toy, like others say? In this video, I will share what I think is important to know about InchoTech to start with. First, you have the incumbents, and there you have the good, bad, and the ugly. Second, InsurTech startups, year disruptors and enablers. Third, you have the reinsurers, maybe the Darth Vader of the insurance industry. And fourth, you have the tech companies like Google, Alibaba, Tencent and Amazon. Maybe the hitman of the insurance industry of tomorrow. So I listen to this. I'm scouting digital and tech trends around the world in order to bring it to you. And I have helped numerous companies to set up ecosystems of digital products and services and to increase their reach with attention hacking. So InsurTech actually describes the situation the insurance industry is in right now. You have a lot of pressure from outside to innovate and to produce digital products and services and insurance products for the customer that excite them and help them in their daily lives. When it's talking about the InsurTech startups, you have a lot of renowned names around. You have Metromile, Oscar, Tsong, and Friend Insurance, Refox, Ladder, Inshirt, Clover Health, Easy, Casco, German Family Insurance, Trough, Root, Policy Genius, and a lot of others. And actually, there's a list in the show notes with several overviews. Important to know that you have certain nations leading the InsurTech movement when it comes to the number of deals. Um, far beyond everybody, it's the US, then UK, Germany, Singapore, and India. But who are the players in the InsurTech and insurance industry? About the startups, also important to know that since several years, several billion US dollars were invested in them. And even though numbers vary, we see that a lot of investors bet on disrupting the insurance industry. Two, incumbents. Even though traditional insurance companies are perceived as dusty, slow, old, and from some even soon to be dead, I want to underline that the group of insurers of incumbents is not homogeneous. It will be like in a sports league. Some clubs are always on top, so I'm not afraid for Allianz, AXA, Generali and other big insurers. In every season you have positive surprises um, and we already see small, especially smaller insurers using the opportunity of digital transformation and growing over market average and investing a lot in restructuring their whole companies or their product portfolio or their IT capabilities for you. But as in most sports leagues, you also have the negative surprises. The formerly gigantic um, teams like Hamburg Sports Club that are going to decline a lot. Third, reinsurers. Reinsurers are the insurers of the insurance industry. This might sound quite similar, but reinsurance is a totally different business model than direct insurers. It's a heavily B2B play with a few customers. You don't have an army of 10,000 of agents and brokers. You don't have to deal with the private end customer or the business end customer, in fact. And reinsurers have amassed a staff of highly skilled, highly trained, and highly sophisticated um, workforce. And what I take away from my work with reinsurers is that due to some weird reason, I don't know, they're very strategic about the future and investing heavily in new upcoming players in the insurance market. So even though they've worked hundreds of years with direct insurers, they are strongly and heavily supporting insurtech startups that come up, but also tech companies and provide them with insurance for insurers. To be honest, the reinsurers are the wild card, the big unknown in this play. Fourth, you have the tech companies. Google, Facebook, Tencent, Alibaba and Amazon. And also in this group you see different strategies. So Google Place tries to establish himself as an enabler providing analytical tools and complex algorithms to carriers that they can use to upload their customer base and other knowledge into their cloud-based systems and to get a lot of insights there. I don't know a single insurance suit who would have the audacity to upload customer data into a Google Cloud. 
And then you have the disruptors like Amazon that are setting up business units to enter the insurance industry and behind the scenes um, evaluate it. And then you have companies like Uber that try to be a platform also for insurance products. Shout out to Scott. <laughs> so what is happening right now? First, there was a lot of panic at the beginning when InsurTech startups started to appear 2014, 12, 13, 11. A lot of panic and it comes. But right now we see a consolidation. You see discussions are more calm. A lot of InsurTech companies are pivoting from being attackers to enablers. So we are in the phase of consolidation. Why is all of this actually happening? We actually had an industry with a lot of high barriers to enter the market. But due to regulation, liberalization, and also to the expansion of the internet, um, we have seen that this formerly high barrier is lowering. And a lot of veterans of the insurance industry are used to the situation where regulator and uh, bad technology actually save them from new participants in the market. But this is over. Regulators are not there to save uh, neither incumbents nor startups, but actually the customer. And the second thing is the internet allows you to start a company with a fraction of the cost it would have costed 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So what will the future be? I don't know. If I would know this, I would already reserve a private island and plan how could I make Hamburg Sports Club win the German championship the first time since 1983. Hey guys, it would help us a lot if you could hit the subscribe button down there and to make us also grow here on YouTube. Thank you very much.